Uh, hi guys. Uh, I'm Pratul and I am half of a very small design studio that we, me and my best friend started a couple of months ago in Bangalore. It's called Path 17. And I'm here to present two things that uh, we've been working on. Uh, the first one is called Ex Libris, which you can see on your, which you can see here. So it's a personal book cataloging system that uh, we wrote because both me and Pratik, we have a shit ton of books. And now that we don't live with our parents anymore, half of our books are at home back in Delhi. And uh, the other half and much newer books that we keep buying are here in Bangalore. So, and a lot of our books are rare books that have been handed down to us by our parents and grandparents and stuff. And people keep borrowing things. And we always lose track of stuff. We never know who has which book and what. So this is something that uh, I used to do in a spreadsheet because uh, the value of my books is not just the monetary value, the emotional value is too much for me and I used to keep track of it in a spreadsheet. After a while we realized that this is a problem that sort of uh, was a recurring problem in most of my friend circle. So we decided to solve it by writing Ex Libris. So I'm going to give you a small demo. Um, this is what you see when you log in. Uh, so I can see my recent books here. I can see my collections down here. I see two locations and the section here for loaned and borrowed, which I haven't actually added anything yet. What Ex Libris does is I can, let's assume that I have a book, uh, say, somebody tell me a book. Uh, okay, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, hold on. I have Wi-Fi, I think. Yeah. And I can select this. So this data is coming courtesy of Open Library, uh, which is a project that's run by Internet Archive. And uh, as soon as you select this and you hit enter, it will add Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy as we add it to your library. If there were any errors returned by Open Library, feel free to edit it. Now this bit is the most important bit. Uh, sorry, most important <laughs> bit. <laughs> right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Right, so this is the most important bit in the entire application is that you're free to edit this data. Now, uh, when we were starting out writing Ex Libris, we were initially going to use Google Books data, but all of that data is copyrighted. You actually cannot edit anything that you get from Google Books and you can't save it, which is why services like Goodreads and Library Thing don't actually let you edit data that they autofill. But Open Library, thanks to again Internet Archive, is entirely public. Uh, is entirely in the public domain, so I can actually go here, and um, so I have a bunch of. So it gave me the ISBN, author, publisher, and year of publication. But I can edit and add a much more detailed, much more details to the book. I mean, so this is geared towards people who really, really care about their books, and you would be, you would be, you know, OCD enough to actually put in translator and language and edition and things like that. Trust me, we found a lot of people who actually like this sort of thing. And uh, I can add a location here. So let's say this is at Noida and fiction and say, I don't know, life, maybe. I can save. And there you go. Now I can go to here and it shows me the books that are at Noida. I can go to locations and it will show me. I have two locations. Go to Bangalore. Show me books that I have here. Again, all of this data um, is editable uh, right now. So this was released. Uh, we released this to the world 13 days ago. Today is the 13th day. And uh, there's a lot of things that still aren't working as they should. For one, you can't see book covers for a lot of them because the book covers are right now being fetched by Open Library. And because Open Library is a contributed database, we don't get book covers for a lot of books. But that is being fixed. Uh, we have a lot more plans for service because the service is paid. It's not a free service. Uh, the trial is for up to 50 books. And after 50 books, it's for a dollar a month, which is less than anything else you'll probably pay for, probably even any book. And um, what we're going to start doing starting next month is that anybody who uh, adds further additional details to their books, we're going to start pushing that data back to Open Library. 
and back to our internet archive. Another one of our plans is because this is a paid service, 10% of whatever we are earning through Ex Libris goes as donations to Internet Archive. Uh, I think that's basically it. It's a very simple thing. It's just a way for us to make sure that all our books remain with us and not with somebody else. Uh, that's it. The second thing that I'm going to show is Cascade. So this is something that I am showing off for the first time here, except I think Nigel. Nigel, are you in the crowd? Are you? I don't think he is. Except Nigel, nobody has actually seen this yet. Uh, this game will be released on Sunday. It's also a Path 17 submission to Mozilla Game On. This is happening through CSS. This is not WebGL. This is CSS 3D Transforms. And uh, it's a very simple word game. And I am going to show you how to play this. Uh, one second. I want to give me a second. I'll call Pratik and I'll tell him. <laughs> Internet deception is too bad on my phone. Okay, so I'm going to play. Uh, I have. I'm going to play Rage. R A G E. Right. Uh, okay, fine. Cool. I'm just over to the mic again. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> right. So this happens through web sockets. This is real time. Uh, so he played race. So the point of the game is very simple. You can select any letter from anywhere. Those dots that you see on top of each letter represent the number of times that you can use that letter. So you can use each consonant three times, each vowel five times. And uh, once you've used up that, uh, anybody, I mean, it's, it's up to four players can play the game concurrently. So once you've used up a letter, it becomes disabled. In we plan to actually, it's called Cascade because we plan to make that block vanish and things to tumble down like Tetris. That hasn't happened yet. It involves a lot of CSS. Uh, also, so uh, the so you can see R now is left with a single dot because I played Rage, he played Race. So now the lesser the number of dots, the more the number of points you get to play it. Because like a vowel, if somebody is using A, there are four players and A has been used four times, the fifth time A is played, it will give five points. This is not like Scrabble where you get more points to play Q and lesser points to play E. So it's more to do with how you use your letters. I could play something else. Uh, let's see. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Jace is not a Scrabble word. Uh, mm, B A N. Oops. Yeah, yeah. There's, there can be two ends. Right. So uh, this is entirely in the web right now. This is just a trial version. We are going to put this out on for free on Sunday. Not open source. Free to play. And. Uh, there will be an Android application coming out in two months that will have this properly native happening nicely and not the, with the stutter that happened right now. Right. Thanks, guys.